What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com and today I'm bringing you guys my first 10 things to do with a Galaxy Note 8 after unboxing. Now I did the same video for the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus, so if you want to check that out, I'll drop a link below. Things have changed a little bit because of the addition of the S Pen. I'm not doing a traditional unboxing just because I feel like this is more interesting or useful and there's already a lot of unboxings out there. So my unit is the Verizon unit. You can see the Verizon Tramp stamp still missing from the Galaxy Note 8 just as it was on the S8. It's the Orchid Grey model as well. This is going to be my wife's phone at the end of the day once we get everything squared away. I'll end up with a black one, maybe one of the blue Exynos models. So as usual, I've got a Google Keep document here so we can go through these 10 things. The first thing is one that I've always included in all my videos for top 10 things to do, and that's set up a secure lock method using the fingerprint, face unlock, or the iris scanner. Now I can only really show you the one that I use because I have eyeglasses, seeing glasses, which I have to wear all the time. So the iris scanner and the face unlock are just not that accurate for me in my experience. But you'll want to navigate to the settings and you'll want to go to lock screen and security, and then set up one of the methods. Now one of the things that I do recommend if you use the fingerprint scanner, you can see I've got two fingerprints set up there, you have to set up a pattern or a pen to go along with it, is that you can use two fingerprints, one on each hand, and then also set up multiple. So yesterday, I just went ahead and set up one on each hand, but then what I like to do is go ahead and scan that same finger again, so I can set up my index finger here, and then just scan it from different angles. That allows the scanner to get better at recognizing the index finger. So you can see that the scanner being in that top corner is already a little hard to reach, especially behind the camera like this, but if you train it with your print a little further, um, then it's a little nicer. So you can see that Samsung has gotten a little better though at recognizing that, and you see it's Samsung Pay at the top. It shows you that it deleted one of my fingerprints because I replaced it with this one. It's actually the same finger. So you will get that message from Samsung Pay if you do decide to scan it another time. That way it's gonna go ahead and replace it in Samsung Pay. So you can use your fingerprint with Samsung Pay, Samsung Pass, all these various things. Of course, if you don't use eyeglasses like I do, the iris scanner may be more convenient. Face lock is also nice, but it's not quite as secure. But you definitely want some sort of secure uh, lock method overall. That way you're not just you know using swipe to open and anyone can get inside your phone. Okay, so that's the first thing. The next thing is to get a quality case, skin, or insurance if you don't like a case or a skin. But in my opinion, I highly prefer having a case. Skins are great and I've reviewed a few of them, but I'm still a case guy. And it's with that that I would really like to thank Tech21 for sponsoring the video and sending me out some cases. Uh, they sent these out so I could show them off in my first Note 8 video. So I wanna highlight a couple of their cases here just to give you some options. The first one is the Evo Wallet, the Evo Check, and the Evo Tactical. So they have some similarities between them. So I'm, I don't have time to show every single case individually. I'm gonna show you the main overview features. Three meters, uh, 10 feet of drop protection. You've got three layer drop protection on all of them. The Evo Wallet obviously has a wallet feature and I'll show that here in just a second. You can see some of the other features on the back of the case. You've got the durable tactile feel. You've got the flex shock on the inside, which is great for the shock absorption. They do test their cases with up to 20 drops in the lab to make sure it's gonna hold up over time. You can see the profile there of the wallet itself, which is really nice. Let me show you guys the difference between the Evo Tactical and the Evo Wallet, just so we can get some perspective. Personally, I like the one piece case, but I know a lot of people out there really like the wallet cases, so that might be one for you as well. The pattern on these is really nice and it's definitely something that people might be interested in seeing as well. So here's the Evo wallet case. You can see it's got some pattern on the front which looks very nice. It's got a nice clasp here which is a big deal because if it doesn't clasp it can just fall open your screen can get cracked anyway. On the inside you got some nice soft lining here which is the actual portion you know where you're going to have your card stored. If you fold this back you see you've got the card slots there and there. And then here is where you're actually gonna put the phone so you can see inside the Evo wallet, looks like this. So you also get some screen protection. And then once you actually snap the case shut, you know, this is gonna be completely secure. You can actually see the Samsung logo through the back as well. Cutouts for all the ports are on point right there. S Pen, the speaker, the USB-C, the headphone jack, everything looks really nice. This is definitely gonna be a highly protective case. And again, they keep protecting you drop after drop, you know, protects drop after drop is their slogan, and that's true because they test these in the lab, you know, for up to 20 drops per case. So overall, I think I'm probably gonna rock out with the Evo Tactical 
going forward because I just like the one piece case, but definitely this particular case is a really nice option as well. So if you like having a wallet case on your phone, this is definitely one that you should consider. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine in the one piece, the Evo Tactical. It's a really thin case as well, considering the amount of protection they give you. The buttons are super responsive, Bixby button, volume buttons, and that same pattern that you've got right there on the back with a little Tech 21 branding. Definitely looks really nice for your Galaxy Note 8. Uh, the other two cases that they have besides the Evo Check there and the, the Evo series, which I just showed you, is the Bullet Shield impact protection along with a edge-to-edge -edge screen protector. And I will be covering these in a separate video uh, as long as mentioning them in my case roundup. So if you guys wanna check out how the screen protector fits and also check out a drop protection test um, with these cases, I will be doing a drop test on the Tech 21 cases, so stay tuned for that. And again, a huge shout out to Tech 21 for sponsoring this first 10 things video. Okay, so once you've got some protection for the actual physical body of the phone, um, either a case or a skin, or if you don't like either one, getting insurance, there's some things that you'll wanna customize on the phone as well. So the next thing is to go into the display settings and choose a few of really important settings that are gonna help you decide how you wanna make use of the screen real estate. The first one is the screen resolution. It comes set out of the box to just regular full HD plus, which is 2220 by 1080 on this phone. I like to have the full resolution 2960 by 1440, so I went ahead and changed that. You can also go into the screen mode and change the color temperature, not only from cool to warm, but you can actually change the individual red, blue, and green that was added uh, in the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus in one of the software updates. You can change which of the apps you wanna run in full screen using the extra tall aspect ratio. All of that can be done from within the display settings as well. And then also within this same setting is the navigation bar. You can choose the orientation that you want, so it's really important. Uh, if you want the Samsung orientation, which has got recents, home, and back, or if you want back, home, and recents, which is the traditional Android slash Google orientation, so you might wanna use that orientation, um, and you can switch it around like so, and there it is. You can also change the color, a few other things, which I'm not incredibly keen on, and you can unlock the phone with your home button. So if you actually have this enabled, if you don't have secure lock enabled, you can just press down on the home button, and it'll take you right into the phone. So these are some display things that you definitely wanna tweak and play around with. You know, see what the things are that you wanna use. A lot of other things, which I'm gonna to touch on here in a second, like the edge screen, can also be found in the display settings. The next thing is the always on display. So the always on display is actually not in the display settings where we were just at. If you wanna to get to the always on display, you have to go back down to lock screen and security. And then the always on display is right here under the always on display and lock screen. You can choose to turn it on. You can also set a schedule and I highly recommend doing that. Set a schedule for whenever it is that you sleep. So for instance, I sleep from maybe midnight to 7 a.m. That's kind of optimistic, maybe midnight to 5 a.m. most days. So I can set a schedule to have the always on display on only during the time when I'm awake so it doesn't wake me up at night. Choose from various different clock styles. You can also put the calendar on there. Now you can have the edge clock over here on the side as your lock screen choice, which I think looks really nice. You can also go back here when you have the always on display and you can choose which information you wanna get on the face widgets. So if you go into face widgets, you can choose to get music controls, your schedule, your next alarm, any of that information as you swipe through. You can also put your own contact info there if you want, put a nickname, uh, whatever you want, your Twitter handle, some things like that. So some cool things to customize. The always on display is a very useful feature of the phone and it's definitely one that I like to leave on during the day when I'm out and about doing things. And I per personally like the little edge screen there because it's not really obtrusive and I can actually see the battery percentage and my notifications as they come in. The next thing is the edge panel selection. So you wanna select which edge panels to use. This is a feature that's been on the Galaxy series for a while now, but you'll wanna navigate over here and then you can see that you've got the apps edge enabled, you've got people edge, you can choose to allow it access to your contacts and they'll get access to your frequently used contacts. You can add more of them. And then obviously you can hit the settings here at the very bottom and that's gonna take you into the edge screen settings itself and it's going to allow you to customize your edge screen settings. So if you wanna see where that is by going into the main settings, just go to display, and then at the very bottom where we were before, you're gonna see the edge screen itself. So the edge screen is right there above the LED indicator. You can go into the edge panels and choose the ones that you want. 
I highly recommend enabling the clipboard edge with the S Pen because it's really nice to have that there because you're probably going to use the clipboard quite a bit. I also personally like to enable the sports edge screen and then the smart select edge screen which is also very useful for using with the S Pen. So obviously once you choose them and you go back to your edge screen, now you've got all of your various edge panels there enabled for use. You can also customize the apps that are in the apps edge. So you can add whatever apps you want, Facebook, Galaxy apps, Flickr. You can only add up to, it looks like 10 apps. And then you can go through and just sort of replace the stock Samsung apps if you wanna add other ones and you don't need some of those apps that are there. So the apps edge is really useful. I find it useful, especially for the S Pen features to have the clipboard over there on the side, just hanging out. It's definitely something that allows you to make the most of this as a productivity device. The next thing is to disable the carrier bloat. So you definitely want to go through and disable any of the apps that Verizon has preloaded on here, just because it frees up memory if you don't want them. Uh, I took a picture of the available storage out of the box, 15 gigabytes that was used out of 64. That's kind of a lot. And a lot of those were actually some large games and stuff that Verizon had pre-installed. The good news is that all of those can mostly be removed and the Verizon apps can mostly all be removed as well. I think that you might actually be able to disable the My Verizon app if you don't want it as well. And Cloud, you can also disable as well. So you can pretty much disable all of them. You can even disable caller name ID. So you can disable all of the Verizon apps and you can actually delete completely uh, most of them. So that's really nice and that'll help you, your phone just have more storage and also be a little faster because some of those Verizon processes are running in the background and you might not want that. Perhaps one of the most important things when it comes to the Galaxy Note series is to go through and set up your S Pen shortcut menu. So when you take out the S Pen out of the bottom of your Galaxy Note 8, you can see that as I unsheath the S Pen, I get this pop-up menu that has some things by default. Create the Note, View All Notes, Smart Select, Screen Write, Live Message, Translate, Bixby Vision, which is lets you point the camera at something and recognize it, and then some custom shortcuts, which you can edit. So you can see here that I can add custom shortcuts. I've added my social media, because I like to use the pen to crop photos. If you go down to the settings, you can change you know, what appears here, and you can change what appears in the shortcuts. So if you go to shortcuts, you can then scroll here and edit the things that appear in the shortcuts themselves. You can delete some of the Samsung shortcuts if you don't want them, and replace it with some other apps that you might want to use with the S Pen. Now one thing I'd also encourage you to do with the S Pen, since it's new, is try out the new live message feature. I'll probably talk about this more when I get close to a full review or maybe some one week impressions. But I really like this, it's pretty cool. Um, I've been using this to send some messages to my wife and it's kind of fun to play around with. So I recommend giving it a shot. It's not like a revolutionary feature, but it's definitely something that's new when it comes to the Galaxy Note 8. So you might want to play around with it since you know you did pay all this money for the new phone and you can just tap back and it'll close live message. So you definitely want to set up your S Pen options, especially if you know that's the reason you bought the phone, which that is the main reason for most people for buying a Note series phone is to get those S Pen uh, features. The next thing is to set up Samsung Pay. So obviously I'm not going to show my card uh, on the camera for obvious reasons, but the very bottom, this little line here is Samsung Pay. So you can swipe up and use your card. All you have to do is go into the Samsung Pay app take a photo of your card, and then you'll also get some platinum status on Samsung Pay and start journeying to earning, earning 3,000 points, which will allow you to get some bonuses like some gift cards and stuff. So just navigate to the Samsung Pay app. Samsung Pay is incredibly useful because you can use it anywhere that NFC is taken, but also you can use it any place that they have available magnetic stripe reader where you can just sort of tap your phone. Much better than Android Pay or Apple Pay where you have to have NFC. So I highly recommend taking advantage of that feature. It's a real distinguishing factor when it comes to buying a Samsung phone. The next thing is a custom Samsung theme. So you can go into Samsung Themes, which is an app on the phone right there, and then download a custom theme. The wallpaper that I have here, I actually got from the Samsung Theme Store. This one that I have right there with the black and the pink. I'll drop a link below to the actual name of it. I also have this color dust wallpaper, which a lot of people love the color dust wallpaper there. If you want that one, you can just search for color dust. But there's also a lot of themes that go through and fully theme out your entire interface. So for instance, if I search for color dust under themes, you'll see that there's a color dust theme that actually gives you all of those options as well as a color dust wallpaper. So you can see here, this one themes out sort of the entire thing. You get a lock screen, you get a wallpaper, 
you get your contacts, your phone app, everything is themed out. So go in there and choose a theme. It's definitely a strength of Samsung. They've had a lot better designers come into the Samsung theme store. And now it's pretty nice to play around with it. And there's a lot of great wallpapers in there, like the one that I'm showing you in today's video. Like I said, I'll link that one below if you wanna check it out. Uh, and then the final thing is Bixby Home and Voice. Now I know I was really hard on Bixby Home and Voice in the Galaxy S8 overview and videos and I tried to find ways to disable it. But the truth is, Bixby has gotten a lot better. You got this button right there on the side. You go ahead and just tap that button, activates Bixby. You can walk through how to go ahead and enable Bixby Voice. So you can ask Bixby to do things for you like open up your gallery and crop your photos or go to the third photo. You can call it by holding down the button and also just by setting up voice recognition. If you press the button for the first time, it'll walk you through the process. It's got your schedule, it's got your news, uh, it's also got some recommendations of some Samsung themes, and you can earn experience points with Bixby as you go. So you can see I just set up the phone so you can go through, and you can also earn Samsung rewards in Samsung Pay by using Bixby. So the more you use it, the better it becomes. And honestly, I've used it quite a bit on the Galaxy S8, and it's just gotten better and better at recognizing the things that I want and got more efficient at completing the tasks that I'm interested in. So those are the 10 things that I recommend. Uh, the first important things, again, are to go through and get yourself a fingerprint scanner, iris scanner, face unlock, secure unlock method, and then also get yourself some protection for your phone, like the Evo Tactical from Tech21. Huge shout out again for them for sponsoring the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe so I can make future videos like this. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Plus, Instagram, and Twitter. The link's in the description. I appreciate you guys checking out the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.